How's it going? I'm Christian Matthew Cullen. We're going to help you get up and running with your new Hammond SK. On behalf of Hammond and the millions of Hammond players, let me welcome you to our family. If you're already one of us, welcome home. You made the right choice in getting an SK. No other instrument has the soul, feel, and range of sound as these remarkable Hammonds. Prepare to be inspired. At its heart, the SK-1 is a full-featured, genuine Hammond organ that responds like the legendary B-3 and has all the components that you expect to find on a vintage instrument. This video will teach you everything you need to know to get started with your SK-1 and to be ready for your next show. We're not going to go into deep programming or explain every parameter, but we'll give you everything you need to begin using your new SK-1. Now let's get the power hooked up. Don't power up just yet. Let's get hooked up for sound. On the SK, you have a few options depending on your amp setup. Most players will use the quarter inch stereo out going into a keyboard amp, such as our Leslie 2121, although any high quality amp will work as well. We recommend running the SK in stereo when you can, although it will sound great in mono as well. The digital Leslie on board the SK is our most advanced yet. But if you wish to use a traditional Leslie, here's how to hook it up. The SK series is fitted with our 8-pin Leslie connector, which can go either to our 21 system or our flagship 3300 Leslie. Connect the 8-pin cable to the 8-pin Leslie jack on the SK. If you're using a Model 21 Leslie, plug the other end into the 21's 8-pin jack. If you're using a Leslie 3300, Take the 8-pin cable you've connected to the SK's back panel and connect it to the 8-pin jack of the 3300. You're going to need something to hear the extra voices. Most players will use the quarter-inch stereo out going into a keyboard amp, such as our Leslie 2121, although any high-quality amp will work as well. By using our 8-pin cable, the digital Leslie is disabled and the front panel Leslie switches will control the external Leslie. The extra voices will not speak through the rotary Leslie elements, but through the keyboard amp attached. If you wish to use a traditional vintage Leslie with a floor preamp, you'll need our adapter which changes the 8-pin jack to a quarter-inch jack, allowing you to send the drawbar tones to a Leslie floor preamp or any other amp that takes a quarter-inch input. When you attach the adapter, it kills the digital Leslie, but know that you will not be able to use the SK's front panel Leslie switch as the quarter-inch cable carries audio and nothing more. We highly recommend the Hammond EXP50 Swell Pedal. It's built like a tank and has a familiar feel and response of a vintage B3 pedal. What's really cool is that it has the distinctive response curve of a B3 that you just cannot find with aftermarket volume pedals. Connect the EXP50 to the EXP pedal jack on the back panel of your SK. Next, you'll probably want a damper or sustain pedal, and we offer our FS9H. Position it where you like it and connect the cable to the damper jack located on the back of the SK. Many like to use a foot switch for Leslie speed, and you're certainly covered here. Again, use our FS9H. Plugged into the foot switch jack on the rear of the SK. There are a number of functions you can assign to the foot pedal. The default, is Leslie Speed Fast Slow Toggle. Set the master volume of the SK and spin the data knob to select different presets. You may wish to jot down the numbers of the presets you really dig. Let's talk about presets and favorites. The SK has 100 factory presets that are hardwired that cannot be changed, and 100 user presets that can be freely overwritten with your own creations. In the display, the factory presets are designated by the prefix P, and the user presets have the prefix U. Of those 200 presets, you can select any 10 and designate them as your favorites using the Favorites button in the middle of the keyboard. They work just like the radio buttons in your car, 
and they can be freely and easily changed. Try them out and see how easy it is to summon the favorite presets. From the factory, the favorites are set to user presets 1 through 10. These can get you through just about any gig, but you can change them immediately. Here's how you do it. We're going to pick a preset for this example. Spin the knob until you come to preset P51 Hey Jimmy. Now find the red record button. Press and hold the red record button and press the favorite button that you wish to assign the preset to. In this case, let's make it favorite number one. That number 51 preset is now available for instant recall just by pressing favorite number one. Don't worry, the preset that was previously there was not lost or erased. It just went back into the rank and file. Let's look at a few very important performance features. First, the transposer and octave switches. Depress and hold the transposer button and use the adjacent up and down buttons to shift the tuning in half step increments. Six half steps up and six half steps down. Easy! But know that the transposer is system wide and its settings are not saved with any preset. The octave button is just as simple. Each press of the down button takes the playing range down an octave, and each press up sends it up. You can use this feature on the fly, or save this setting as part of any preset. The master EQ affects the entire instrument and is not changed by the presets. Let's take a look at the organ specifics. The SK has one set of drawbars that work for the upper, lower, and pedals. You choose which division to edit by the drawbar select switches. We'll work with the upper for now. The drawbars select the different harmonics that make up your tone, just as on the B3. There's no right or wrong way to set these. Find the tone you like. The chorus vibrato is an important part of the Hammond sound. While the SK doesn't have the iconic round C1, C2, C3 knob, the controls do the same thing and have the same effect on the sound. Select which keyboard you wish to have the chorus vibrato on. We'll select upper, and then which type you'd prefer. Vibrato 1 or 2, and by pressing both buttons together, you get vibrato 3. Hit the chorus button to switch the generator to chorus mode. Here's chorus 1, chorus 2, and by pressing both buttons together, it gets you the emittable chorus 3 or C3. These settings are remembered in each preset, and like most of the controls on the front panel, you can edit them on the fly while playing. The chief innovation on the B3 when it was first released was the inclusion of touch response percussion. It's that little accent on the top of the sound that is so distinctive. Like on the B3, it is only available on the upper manual. You can select second, which is an octave higher than the note you're playing, or third, which sounds an octave and a fifth above. Unlike the B3, you can select both types together for an interesting effect. Fast shortens the decay of the percussion tone, and soft decreases its volume. All of these settings are remembered in each preset. A lot of players like to have some grit in their tone, so let's take a look at the overdrive. Pretty simple. Press the button and dial it in. A little bit to warm up the sound, or crank it up to rock out. With every feature we are covering, you can go deeper into the menus and tweak the parameters to fit your style of playing, and save it all in the user presets. Check out the reference guide or any of our instructional videos to learn more. It's not the vintage Hammond sound without a Leslie, and the SK-1's digital Leslie is our best yet. Press the fast button to give it the fast spin. Press it again to return to slow. When none of the lights are lit, you're on slow speed. To stop the rotors totally, press the stop button. You won't hear any motion, but you're still going through the digital Leslie circuitry, giving the cabinet simulation, virtual mic placement, and frequency split. Should you wish to disengage the digital Leslie totally, press the bypass button. 
A lot of players wish to split the keyboard, and that option is available with the touch of a button. Just hit split, and there you go. If you'd like a little manual bass, press the manual bass button. Go back up to the drawbar select buttons and choose pedal. Clear the drawbars. And again, don't worry, your upper and lower registrations are preserved. And register the 16 and 8 drawbars to your liking, just as on a B3. If you want some sustain on that bass, just press the P sus button. That stands for pedal sustain, but it works for the manual bass as well. There are three other organ divisions in the SK-1, FARF, VX, and PIPE. The FARF and VX are authentic models of the famous 1960s combo organs. You can register these organs exactly as you were able to on the original. To select these models quickly, return to the drawbar select buttons and push all three together. This will take you to a menu screen where you choose the organ type you desire. B types 1, 2, and Mellow are the classic Hammond tones. Farf, VX, and Pipe call their respective models. Press play to return to playing mode. Use the drawbars as before to register your tones. Consult the legend printed on the top panel to guide you in choosing sounds. Here's a tip. When choosing the VX model, remember that you register it just like the original. You have to register one or both waveform drawbars to get sound. The vibrato, overdrive, and Leslie controls will work with the FARF and VX models, but will not work with the pipe models. If we stop there, we'd have a great instrument, but that's only half the SK-1. We call the other side extra voices, and they comprise the rest of the keyboard family beyond the Hammond organ. Acoustic and electric pianos, clavs, accordion, synth and orchestral voices, they're all in there. Let's show you how to access them. You can assign the extra voices to the upper or lower keyboard, meaning you can play Hammond organ with your right hand and piano with your left or vice versa. The configurations are up to you. You can also play the extra voices together with the organ voices or play them by themselves. Know, however, that you can only play one extra voice at a time. So let's get started. We're going to set up for a grand piano alone on the upper keyboard. The allocate buttons specify where the extra voices are going to play. In this case, we'll choose upper. And because we want to play the piano by itself, we'll hit the solo button. The solo button suppresses the organ division to allow the chosen extra voice to play alone. Now let's choose the grand piano. We'll press the A piano button. You'll notice that the screen changed. This is where you choose the variations of the major category. The major category is on the top and the variation is on the bottom. When we play the keyboard, we have a grand piano. If we press the E piano button, we'll have an electric piano. It's that easy. If we turn off the solo button, we'll find the extra voice playing along with the organ voices. The extra voices will play along with the FARF, VX, and pipe organs as well. The extra voice section has its own volume control and its own DSP effects section. Each extra voice has a default effect assigned to it whose primary adjustable value is assigned to the extra voice effects knob. You can enable or disable the effect by pushing the button underneath the knob. When the button is lit, the effect is on. This video only scratches the surface of the musical power available to you in this 15 pound miracle, the Hammond SK-1. Check out our other player-driven videos available at our website and on YouTube to delve deeper and make the SK-1 your own. I'm Christian Matthew Cullen. Thanks for watching.